You guys are going to stick around even though Dane is gone? All right. John, did you have to uh, recuse yourself from calling the Bilal Muhammad fight? Is that, uh, is that too much of a conflict of interest there for you? So if you don't know what John, John is talking about, Bilal Muhammad has a video podcast with my twin brother under the Anakin Florian podcast banner. But I go back, way back with Diego Lima, right? One of Brian Stan's longtime training partners. So no conflict of interest, you know. Diego's my guy too, but certainly excited for Bilal to have a clean bill of health and to try to spin this thing forward, man, because he is criminally underappreciated. He's won seven of eight, three in a row, only lost to Jeff Neal. I don't have to tell you that, but this is the time for Bilal to, uh, to really have the coming out party on, a, on the card in which the belt in his division is going to be on the line. He's prioritized to finish and uh, certainly is going to help his show if he can get that done. So we'll see. Nice. You guys prepping for this event, you got a taste of having crowds back, right? And, and now you don't again. Did that change anything the way you're, you're approaching your, your job or just, just the way you experience it? It can't change my approach, but I'm a fan first, and I really appreciated having those people in the building. Even though we had hockey boards between us and the fans, you could be sure I was going over there and trying to incite them and, uh, and talk to them. But I can't wait till we have fans back in the building. I feel like even if it's 2,000 fans, they can sound like 10,000. And as you guys know, any of you that were there for UFC 257, that crowd brought it. So, uh, Dude, say the word, man. I'll take extra COVID tests if need be. I want fans in the building. As you were prepping for this main event, man, I think we've been hanging on every guy's word between Usman and Burns, trying to figure out which one of them actually got the better of each other in training. Um, what did you take from it in, in your extensive conversations with him? Have you figured out who was, who was beating who in the training room? It seems like Gilbert has a lot of confidence that he can submit Kamaru if this fight happens extendedly on the canvas. I think Kamaru has been more tight-lipped, and that's obviously been his approach in the past. I think what was most interesting to me was to hear what both guys had to say about the friendship, because Kamaru Usman seems to think that maybe he overstated the friendship prior, and now... Maybe they're just going to be acquaintances, whereas Gilbert, I think, would love to bury the hatchet as soon as this fight is over and sort of rekindle things. So they seem to be in different places. My informed speculation is that even though Kamaru would have accepted the title fight if he was in Gilbert's position, he didn't necessarily love the way Burns went about certain parts of this process. So, uh, hey, man, they're going to lock that door behind them tomorrow night, and uh, I think we're all curious to see how it'll play out. Yeah, and you always do such a good job of, like, setting the stage and kind of framing the story. For you, what's most intriguing? I mean, is this all about the, the former training partners? Is that the main storyline? Or to you, is it more the stylistic matchup? You know, because I think you could look at it both ways. There's kind of the surface story, but there's also – how does that grappling match up? So which, which one's the big story for you? Well, if I had to pick one of those two, I think it's hard to get too far away from the relationship because other than having genuine heat on a fight where two guys really don't like each other, this is as good a backdrop as you can get because it's heat. It's just a different type of heat. But to me, the big untalked about storyline is that Kamar Usman is trying to break George St. Pierre's record for the most consecutive welterweight wins. And we can talk about Bilal being underappreciated and Gilbert Burns maybe being underappreciated by the odds makers and the professional bettors out there. How about some love for Kamar Usman? I mean, this man has put on paper one of the most dominant careers in any division in UFC history, and uh, you start to invoke the name George St. Pierre, you start to pass that guy, you put yourself in a Hall of Fame jacket pretty soon thereafter. So that's a big storyline for me as Kamaru looks to, to continue his welterweight greatness. Yeah. Last thing for me, I mean, obviously this has all been all about the main event, the title's on the line, but um, I think the card's kind of deep in terms of, like, matchups. So what, is there one fight in particular or one fighter in particular that you're looking at that's really standing out to you that maybe, you know, people should be getting ready for and paying attention to? I remember when Alexa Grasso made her UFC debut and how highly touted she was at the time. And now she has developed into a five-tool fighter. So wicked excited for the co-main event to see Macy Barber back, obviously. Uh, you know how we all feel about her. But for me, I got my eyes on Kelvin Gastelum. And I hate to focus solely on the pay-per-view when you ask me this question, but... Kenny Florian said to me this week, we're going to know with Kelvin Gastelum if, if that championship hunger really remains, if he has what it takes to get back to where he was going into that Adesanya fight in 2019, a fight in which he was very competitive. So to me, Kelvin Gastelum is a huge story and storyline going in here. Does he have what it takes, you know, to beat a, a, a two-to-one underdog in Ian Heinish who is hungry, who is primal, and, and is ready to take his ranking in the top ten? So we'll see, my man. 
John, over on the other side. Uh, when we spoke to you on Fight Island, uh, you said Kamaru hadn't quite reached that part of his reign that he would be a massive betting favorite like the Habibs and everyone. Do you think a win over Gilbert Burns is enough to propel him into that upper echelon of betting favorites? That's a good question. Maybe this will be the win that does it, but it's interesting to hear Dana talk about, you know, Gilbert Burns maybe not getting the respect. And ultimately, as you guys know, they're trying to draw two-way action. So, I'm a little bit, I think it's properly priced, if I'm being honest, you know, like I think minus 270, I think Kamar Usman deserves that distinction. Is he going to get into Shevchenko territory? I think it's harder in the men's game to think that he would ever get there. Um, but I can understand why people, if it drops to minus 240, would see tremendous value on Kamar Usman, right? We talk about Macy Barber, right? Minus 850 in her last fight against Roxanne Mataferi. So say what you want about Alexa Grasso, but Macy Barber's plus 125. You're getting her a plus money when you had to mortgage the farm to get her last time. So we'll see. But I think Kamara deserves respect that he gets. How'd you uh, make out on Sunday? Biggest hit of my career, you know, as a sports gambler dating to 1996. I was sort of progressively betting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers all season long. I think the best price I got was 14 to 1. But uh, went to that plush new Circus Sportsbook last night. And uh, the money is over at the Courtyard by Marriott if anybody wants to break into my room. It's there right now. John Anik over here. Uh, John, obviously you're one of the premier play-by-play -play guys in the sports game, particularly mixed martial arts. How do you keep going back to, what do you work on to keep getting better year in, year out, this far in the game in your career? So I think the hardest thing for any of us is to listen back to your work and watch your work. And it's very much an inconvenient truth of the business because even though I've been doing this a long time and I think maybe my work is less cringeworthy now than it was in 2011 when I started or where I was doing Bellator 1 in 2009, it's still hard to listen to yourself. And we've never had a perfect show. There's always room for improvement. You know, I've worked a lot on being more concise, and especially in a three-man booth, that's something that I, I need to be. And also just to allow the action, especially in a COVID-19 climate, to kind of speak for itself. Sometimes we don't even have to go to the corner uh, to actually hear what a coach is saying. So that's been a particular area of focus for me. Uh, but my system, I don't think, is broken. So in terms of the preparation, I'm really trying to keep things the same way. And uh, even today, we're dealing with a variable where it looks like maybe Bobby Green might not be able to compete. You know, that has a trickle-down effect for the live production team and the scripts and everything else. So never never a dull moment in the fight, week, in, in the fight game and, and not a fight week goes by where we're not dealing with some form of challenge. But uh, just trying to stay sharp and, and watch myself back uh, as best I can. We know Dana White is infamous for he has his phone next to him during the whole production. Can you remember the first time that that phone rang and he had notes for you? So when Joe Silva was still here, I know at times Dana would maybe send a text message to Joe Silva and say, dude, Anik better clean this up or this is going to be the last show he ever works, you know? So, but I think it's tough love and I think it's a motivating thing for me. Like, I don't know that I want bosses like Craig Borsari is my direct boss. I don't know that I want bosses who are massaging me all the time and telling me how great I am. I think it's motivating, the tough love. Uh, but it's been an evolution, right? I mean, I started in 2011, and I certainly feel like I'm in a better place now than I was back then. But uh, as I said, man, we've never had a perfect show. And ultimately, in a lot of respects, I turned in the journalist card to become a promoter. So ultimately, I'm out there to execute the vision of the promotion. And when I don't do that to the best of my ability, or I don't do that the way they would like me to, uh, I'm going to hear about it. And, and my skin is getting thicker by the day, thankfully.